It's crazy being back because it's been about two and a half months. Just put the power on now and I'm surprised it doesn't smell damp. There's a few little spots of mold, but I was worried up here would be all going bad. I thought it would be musty inside, but it's really not. But I need to do a lot of cleaning and organizing. Woo! I feel re-energized, but at the same time, I'm still looking at all the things that I need to do. Just gotta hope the weather holds out and I can get as much done as possible. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've got everything I need. Electricity, water, and music. I don't really have a pump, so yeah, I'll just clear out the water. I've got a new dinghy as well, which I'd like to get running. It's nice to have a bit of extra transport, but the engine wasn't working last time, but we'll see. So this 9.9 .9 is actually the maximum engine size that you can have on this little dinghy and it's going to be massively overpowered but it's going to be incredibly fun but there's a problem with the fuel i think it's the squeezy bulb thing on the fuel tank it wasn't working last time so hopefully i'll be able to get one of those today uh, if i'm quick enough but it's good that this engine is now out of the way i've got the other engine which i'll take off now so then i can start working on the cage Pretty desperate to see if it is the fuel line that's not working on this engine so I just went out and got one and got some shopping as well need to stock up on food <laughs> fingers crossed That went so much better than I thought it would. These little problems are a pain in the ass because it could just be one little element that's letting the air in, but it seems to be good now. It's nice to have my car back, my water car. It's absolutely crazy to be doing this again. Getting back into the mood, getting back into the state of just working. I'm just gonna crack on with this cage. It's not gonna be easy to drill. I'm gonna drill it all in situ, so it should be interesting. I really feel like these drill bits are not very good.
There we go. This bar is fully installed and it feels so strong. There's hardly any movement in the engine boxes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so over the course of the video, I'll just build this up and we'll see how it looks. Uh, I'm starting to believe in it a bit more now. After feeling how f how strong this is now, I uh, did have a tarp uh, to collect all the shavings uh, so that my dinghy doesn't get popped. And this is such an important part for me. I couldn't do any of this work below the waterline without this absolute behemoth of a platform. nothing but rain for 24 hours so it's no fun really working in this weather also I need to sharpen my drill bits and it's probably the worst time to go but I need to go to the DIY shop to get some bolts because I've just been using recycled screwed rod I'd like to use bolts if I can get some stainless steel ones also proper rivets as well hopefully I can get a rivet gun because I'm going to do something so that I can build the deck but yeah, that'll be later also I've got glasses now I've got astigmatism <laughs> I'm gonna get absolutely soaking wet uh, going on my bike. Yeah, the dinghy won't take me to the hardware shop, unfortunately. And this is not a sponsorship, but because I have my dehumidifier in here, I can just take my rain gear and dry it off inside here, which is just amazing. got this drill bit sharp now and I was struggling to use it at first because you have this sort of clippy on thing and you sort of try and get the angle with that but I just started doing it freehand instead and some of them have come out alright if anyone has any tips for sharpening drill bits this is a pretty good little grinder I know people do it on a, on a grinder can you just hold it in place I mean these are pretty sharp now I think yeah. so tomorrow hopefully dry weather I was absolutely shocked at the price of these bolts they were 14 euros for 10 yesterday I was using recycled screwed rod this actually works out way cheaper that's mad isn't it
My work got cut short yesterday because of the rain and also it was just taking me so long to drill through that metal with those sharpened drill bits they just kept cracking off the edge. I think those drills are too weak so I went out last night again to get some cobalt drills so hopefully these cobalt drills will make drilling so much easier and I can get a couple more pieces of the cage in and then I can start putting a little cockpit floor in which would be so nice. <laughs> Also, I got a little bit of a cold, not fun. I'll just do a good breakfast, some good paracetamol, and crack on. Look at that. <laughs> when I was drilling with these, the cutting edge just snapped off. And I think it's because of, of the material of the actual drill bits. So I've got these cobalt drill bits. Hopefully these will cut through a lot better because it's taken me two days and I've only put two bars on. But hopefully we'll get a, a lot done today. Should be a lot drier today, so fingers crossed. That's worked so much better. This should be a lot faster today. Absolutely no need for a gym membership when you've got a boat project. So I've got those cross pieces of steel in and then what I'm going to do now is build a, a wooden platform so that I can then put the other pieces of the cage in.
been invited for soup at Nick's huge catamaran which he's just come in on. So uh, we'll take a little look around. Do you want to take us, take us around? Yeah, sure. Okay, so it's the main saloon. Obviously the piano is a very important feature on yeah. any yacht. You know? <laughs> this is like the service area of the boat. So it's all the workshop tools and equipment. Back yeah. there is my cabin. Nice. Nice. A little single cabin. Toilet. Very basic. Functional. Functional. I like it, it's quite, I don't know, it's almost like sci-fi at this part. <laughs> yeah, like I called it Nautilus after, you know, 20,000 leagues under the sea. Okay. And Captain Nemo and all that, you know, remember what that thing looked like, it was a sort of clunky old cyberpunk sort of thing. So you arrived in, well, Zandam, just outside Amsterdam, from, yeah. where, where did you go? Or where have you been well, recently? I've been in another harbour in the centre of town for the, since October and, um, Prior to that, we were in Spain, in France, around Scotland. So you got the boat in Scotland, re refitted it there? Refitted in Glasgow. Okay, lovely. Yeah, and I think I'm going back to Spain where the weather's warmer. Yeah, I'm surprised that you came up here. Well, I thought I was going to go to Scandinavia, but and then... You know. Yeah, nice. So, that's a double in here. There's a, another toilet and shower in there. This is the water maker. This is a, a really beautiful... Yeah. The equipment's a bit dark in there, but, right. but this produces 120 litres an hour. Wow, as so you can uh, run a bath. We've got a bath, yeah. <laughs> got a thing. And this is the most important bit of equipment on the whole boat, the dishwasher. I love it. It's got all the, all the mod cons. And then these are, these are garden planters, yeah, oh, right. which I just hang on there, and that makes all the shelving. Oh, nice. Foot operated, foot operated uh, hot and cold water, and the galley is electric. So we've got an oven and microwave and a hob. It's the same as the other side, the mirror images, but okay. And the en obviously engines underneath. Uh, what's the size of the boat? Forty-eight foot. Forty-eight. Yeah. It's a Mumbi. It's a Mumbi forty-eight aluminium catamaran. And your last boat was a Pahi 42, just like mine. Exactly. <laughs> Which I loved. I loved the Pahi 42 and they're beautiful yeah. sailing boats. Um, so I had that three years, sailed it single-handed round the UK and ended up in France. So now right. sort of three or four years then I sold it. Right. Moved on to a Prout I had after that. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big Warren fan. Yeah. And the, you know, the ethos, the philosophy behind it. Good all-round ocean sailing you know, cheap and cheerful cruising with a great boat, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they really sail really, really well. Oh, That's nice. the, that is really the important thing, you know, is the, yeah. the deep V of the hull and the nice curves of the bows. I mean, they've got very sea kindly, mm -hmm. because you remember most catamarans, including this one, have a rounded, flat-bottomed hull, right. which means it's sort of hobby, little hobby horse like this over the waves. You get this hobby horse thing, which, you know, the fatter your hulls are, the more uh, hobby horsing. It's, it's a really clever design, it's a good yeah. design. And the V as well gives it a lot of sort of lateral forward mode stability. You know, you, you don't uh, have so much leeway okay. from a rounded bilge. Yeah. So yeah, this one's made out of aluminium. Nice, solid material. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it took me 20 years to find this boat. My, yeah, you know, yeah. So, um, yeah, but I love it. It's super functional, yeah. but like little quirky touches. Yeah. Really nice. Jump test. I was going to put this length across like this so that these two are connected this way. But I'm wondering whether I should put it like that and then I can lower the engine boxes from this angle and then when the engines are up, all the weight is taken by both sides. 
I think as these engine boxes are attached to here and that big engine is down there, a lot of the weight is going to be on these back braces. My only worries with this whole setup is that the whole thing rests on the clamping action of these. So a lot of the stress of everything is on these M10 bolts. Obviously for now it's incredibly strong. I can jump on it from a height, but there's no engines on it. I'm thinking I'll increase those to M12 sized bolts and also thinking of lashing it around. It looks a bit naff at the moment because of all the exposed steel, but like what I've done with this cockpit platform, uh, these on top of these beams is going to be wood which is going to hide all this and all this at the front of this beam then I have the problem at the back of this beam is also the metal cage construction and I just want to disguise the cage construction as much as possible these engine bays will have a, a big lid and then perhaps a little door down here the rest of the deck is going to be completely flat for now my idea with the boat at the moment is literally just to get it sailing. I can do a lot of work at anchor, uh, I can do a lot of work on the fly. I just want to get the bare bones, the bare necessities right and then it will be like a sailing project. So I do, I do want to enjoy the boat. Ideally this summer I would like to get sailing. I'd like to go up to the North Sea. Well, it's actually a place called Friesland. There's lots of tidal islands there. I'd love to go for a little mini cruise there to test out the boat and then we'll see how far we get in summer whether I start making my way down to France because I still have a French residency it's going to be a bit easier for me traveling to and from France as opposed to from Amsterdam it's always a bit of a worry because I, I don't think I should really be staying for longer than three months I mean who knows if I carry on Every day I could even be sailing or almost ready, or putting the mast on in three months anyway. So we'll see. The days are getting longer now at least and then the clocks will be going forward or backward. I can never work it out soon. And it's not cold. It's really not cold. I still haven't had a chance to test out my little dinghy and its new engine. So I'm going to give that a good little run. Hopefully that's all working good now. The dinghy is full up of water already. So, and I think one of the flipping panels in the floor has popped perhaps due to metal shavings on the deck when I was pumping it up well I think there's definitely a fuel problem with my outboard I don't know whether to take the carb off again give it a clean potentially it's a fuel pump but when I was turning it over fuel was coming out so perhaps it's just the carb. Yeah, my dad has actually milled the mast step. He's basically CNC'd that flat. Because if you remember, it was wobbling all over the place. So it's gonna be really great to get that mast step back and then I'll fix it on this main mast beam and then uh, I can work out where I'm gonna put all my chain plates. Sorry, it's been such a long time since I last uploaded. Uh, it was a chaotic few weeks. Uh, it was my brother's wedding. Uh, coming back, readjusting, getting back into the flow. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming back to watch. If you can like this video, it helps me a lot. And if you send us uh, any advice, any comments, criticisms, let me know in the comments. It really helps the channel a lot. And thank you so much as well to the people who've donated through Coffee, PayPal, uh, Super Chat, Patron. You'll have seen in my last video how much that means to me. Uh, it's meant that I've been able to do this project essentially. So thank you so much and uh, yeah, see you next week.